Keith here from PickingLessons.com. In this banjo lesson, we're going to take a look at a great Celtic tune called the Fox Hunters. Now the Fox Hunters is a slip jig and a slip jig is in 9-8 time. So a little bit later in this lesson, we're going to have a talk about the 9-8 time signature. Now this arrangement is primarily played out of single string style with a little bit of melodic playing. So we'll take a look at some exercises to cover this a little bit later as well. There are four parts to the tune and first of all, we're going to take a look at part A and B nice and slow. One and uh, two and uh, three and uh Okay, so there was part A and B nice and slow for the fox hunters. If you head on over to pickandlessons.com, you're going to find the tab for the complete arrangement. You'll also find part two of this lesson where we have a look at part C and D and break down the tune there and look at some exercises. You'll also find some backing tracks at three tempos and play along tracks at the three tempos as well. Pickandlessons.com. All right, so nine eight time. So the slip jig is a nine eight time. What that means is we have three dotted quarter note beats per measure. So this is our pulse, one, two, three. We have three of them per measure. And inside of those beats, we have three eighth notes. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. One and a two and a three and a one and a two and a three and a. So the nine eight time signature, we have three beats or three pulses per bar, but each beat is broken down into three quavers. So that's our nine eight time signature. Now what we're trying to do in our playing is emphasize the notes that fall on the beat. Every time we find a note being played on the pulse, we want to emphasize that. And one of the ways we're going to do that is to play those notes with our thumb. So pretty much all the way through the tune, we get to use just the thumb and index finger alternating. And we're going to take a look at a couple of exercises to look at some of the rhythm variations that we have and how we're going to approach that with our right hand. The left hand is pretty straightforward. In the tablature, you'll have all the markings for your left hand and your right hand, but the left hand is not too tricky. So we'll spend more time on the right hand. So the first exercise we're going to take a look at is from bar three in part A. So bar three sounds like this. So we have one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Now let's break that down. The first beat, we have a quarter note and a quaver. So we're going to play that with thumb and then index. One, two, three. Thumb, index, one, two, three. So when we have two notes being the quarter note quaver, that's the thumb and index, make sure you pause on that quarter note. One, two, three. One, two, three. Thumb to index. Now beat two, we have three eighth notes. And the eighth notes, we have a, a pull off there, joining the second and third of those notes. So again, we only need to pick two of the notes and it's thumb and index. So this time we have one, two, three. And our thumb kicks it off followed by the index, then the flick, the pull off. One, two, three, one, two, three. So again, just thumb and index finger and thumb starts on the beat. So putting those first two beats together sounds like this. One, two, three, one, two, three. Thumb, index, thumb, index, flick. Okay, again, the thumb is playing that note on the beat. Now, 
And the third beat here, again, we have three eighth notes, but we have a hammer on connecting the first and second notes, and then we'll pick the last note of the three. So that sounds like this. One, two, three, and our fingers, thumb, hammer on, index finger. One, two, three. So our thumb and first finger are really doing all the work and we've got a couple of hammer-ons and pull-offs in there. The entire bar sounds like this. Three and a one. Three and a one and a two and a three and a. So remember, thumb is driving those accented notes on the pulse. So that bar is pretty straightforward really because we're only alternating between thumb and index and that's all we need to do. But just keep in mind our thumb is going to kick off all of these notes that fall on the first beat in part A and part B. All right, our next exercise is going to be out of part B. We're going to take a look at the first measure in part B. And to begin with, the first beat is the same as the first beat in our last exercise. So we have uh, the quarter note quaver. One, two, three. And we're just going to, again, play that with thumb and index. So let's move on. Beat two and beat three. Here we have three eighth notes per beat that we need to pick all of them. So in this scenario, we're going to use our thumb, index, thumb, thumb, index, thumb. So for beats two and three, sounds like this. And to pick those, I'm using my thumb, index, thumb, thumb, index, thumb. So grouping of three notes, thumb, index, thumb, thumb, index, thumb. One more time. Thumb, index, thumb, thumb, index, thumb. So our thumb is playing the note that falls on the beat. Doesn't matter what happened before, our thumb is playing that note on the beat. It really helps with our pulse and it's, it's not too tricky once you've practiced it. That entire bar sounds like this. And our right hand, thumb, Index, thumb, index, thumb, thumb, index, thumb. Moving to the next note would also be the thumb again. So let's put the first note of the second bar in there as well. Three and a. Thumb, index, thumb, index, thumb, thumb, index, thumb, thumb. And again, the thumb is accenting those notes that fall on the pulse. That's really important. We want those notes to be accented in, in this tune. So spend some time on those exercises while you're working on these two sections of the song, parts A and B. They'll definitely help the other measures within these two parts. All right, head on over to pickinglessons.com and you'll find this second video going into part C and D. And you'll also find the tab and some play along and backing tracks. I'll see you there.